G'day! In today's video I'm having a look at a HP Pavilion 15 with the model number 15-BS625TX. I'm wanting to see, well, what I'm going to be doing in this video is replacing the hard drive with an SSD. To begin with we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. And while I'm opening it up I will also quickly go over what you need to do if you were to upgrade the RAM in this. And let's have a look at the other few different repair points that this machine has. So, so far all the screws I've removed are the same. Granted there will be some hidden ones on here. Which, bonus points if you can guess where they are. They will be under, yeah. Assumably all four corners. There's one revealed just here. There. Now we'll zoom you guys in a bit later after I've opened this up. And the screw length is still the same. It's handy when some manufacturers choose to use the same identical screws for the whole system. Go. Take out the USB port as well, just in case. Yep, and we have some screws here. So the specs on this machine, it's running an i7 7500U with 8 gig of DDR4 running at 2133. And then weirdly it's got a Radian 530, which is a model I'm not too familiar with. It's got 2 gig of RAM, but disgustingly it's DDR3. So don't expect much performance from that at all. Now, I have forgotten one extra screw down here. There we go. So all screws in there are all identical. Now here comes the slightly challenging part. We've got the plastic pry tool. What we want to do is open it up slow, slightly. And I'm going to work in between the textured part and the glossy part. And I should be able to get either a metal pry tool or a plastic. Actually, I'll start with a metal, like so. There we go, just like that. Now, one side's going to be easier to lift off than the other. So I will focus on going to that side at first. Switch it to my other plastic one. And I'm just going like working my way under, forward, and pull it down. Probably almost do this with my hands actually. There we go. I know, and the side that I expected to be a bit challenging has come off. Now I will kind of need to pull this back cover down towards me and pull up. And we are now in. So now that we're in here, what do we have? This machine would have had the option at some stage, not with this bottom cover, to have a DVD burner. You could potentially get the hard drive adapter and put another hard drive in here. But that's not what I'm gonna get do in this one. It does look fairly similar to other HP 250 G5, G6 machines. Looking at it, I do spot something a little bit interesting, which I did not expect to see. We'll zoom in. So let's go over the overall upgradability of this machine. The daughter board here is replaceable if you damage one of the USBs on it. We have a 2.5 inch hard drive that's also replaceable. Then, unexpectedly, we have an M.2 SSD right here, which I'm probably going to go in the route of actually installing one as I believe this will probably support, it will be an NVMe, not an MSATA. I'll find that out quite shortly. Looking over here, we have RAM. So to get it out, it's quite simple. These two metal tabs here and here flick out. And then this lifts up and out. And 
there we go. We have one stick of RAM removed. Yeah, the brand, I'm not actually sure who made this one. Um, a logo I've seen before, but I just can't remember it. There you guys go. So you could potentially install another 8 gig stick in here and have it running in dual channel, which would give you a neat little boost in performance of up to potentially, I'd say probably about 5, maybe 5%, 10% if you're lucky, depending on what you're doing. Looking over here, we would have, I believe, the 530 under here, and going by the size of this, this would be the 15 watt 7500U, so very low power, thus lack of cooling, as some laptops do get up to around 45 watts of power. Over here, we have a the power jack, to lift that up, you will see that there isn't soldered directly to the board. It is running underneath this hinge, across, all the way to here. So from there, if you do have a damaged charger port on the HP 15, you can physically replace that. Now, I do have a choice. I can go down the path of putting in a crucial SSD. This one here is just a very basic BX500. So it has no DRAM, uh, DRAM cache, so it does drop down in performance after time. But for something cheap to replace an old mechanical drive that's failing, it's definitely a viable option. Yet the other path that I'm leaning towards is replacing it with a NVMe drive. So this one's only 128 gig. So we'll have a bit of a look around to see if I've got a 256. That is going to be the much more preferred option. And it will be living here. So after trying some M.2s, turns out it is a M.2 SATA, not M.2 NVMe. So some older varieties will work fine, but newer varieties will not. So that puts a halt to that idea. So I guess I'll be going down the path of the of the SATA SSD. Lift that up, should be able to wiggle this back and free. And as you see, we have a Toshiba one terabyte. Now put this in, down, back it over. From here, we just need to put the back on, reassemble. Now I am going to be cloning windows from the old drive to the new drive externally. So I will be using a 2.5 inch SATA to USB. The drive will be going into here and I'll be using a program called a Cronus True Image to clone it from here to here. Also while we're in there, putting the back on, should be pretty straightforward. So we should be able to slide it over the edges, wiggle it down, and then just pull it together. As you can see, or here. And then from here, put in your various screws, especially the ones that are hidden, reinstall your battery, and then you'll be right to go from there. Overall, hope this helps you, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.